The Bluest Eye is set in 1941, and much of it is narrated by a young African-American girl, Claudia McTeer, who lives with her parents and her older sister, Frida. In the introduction, another girl, Picola, comes to stay with the McTeers after her father, Charlie Breedlove, tried to burn down the Breedlove's home. In the rising action, while Picola is staying with Claudia's family, she begins menstruating. Piccola wants to have blue eyes, believing if she had them, life would be better. At school, Piccola is teased by a classmate named Maureen Peel. Shortly thereafter, Piccola is mistreated by a neighborhood boy, Louis Jr., who abuses his cat in front of her, and when his mother returns home, he blames Piccola. The girls think Frida should drink alcohol to avoid being ruined, and decide to get some from Charlie. They find Piccola waiting outside the house where her mother works. They're challenged by a little white girl who lives there, and Piccola accidentally spills a pie her mother made. Mrs. Breedlove scolds Piccola harshly, but speaks kindly to the white girl. The next two chapters describe the histories of Mrs. Breedlove and Charlie. One morning, as he comes home drunk, Charlie sees Piccola standing in a pose that reminds him of Pauline. In the heart-wrenching climax of the bluest eye, Charlie tries to flirt with Piccola, and he rapes her. In the falling action, Piccola visits Soaphead Church, a fortune teller, and asks him to help her get blue eyes. Soaphead tricks Piccola into poisoning his landlady's elderly dog. Piccola runs away, eventually losing her mind. In the resolution, Claudia and Frida travel the neighborhood selling seeds. They overhear gossip in the neighborhood that Piccola is pregnant with Charlie's baby. They decide to bury their saved up money and seeds as an offering to protect Piccola's baby. They believe if the seeds grow, the baby will be fine, but the baby died. There are five central characters in Toni Morrison's powerful, heartbreaking novel, The Bluest Eye. Claudia McTeer represents the author herself, Toni Morrison, as a young girl. Claudia feels strongly about her identity as an African-American, and she's troubled by the cultural messages she hears, which suggest a white girl is better or more beautiful. Claudia's life is not easy, but she has energy and determination to survive. Piccola Breedlove believes she's ugly. After all, everyone has told her she's ugly for her entire life. She's convinced she needs blue eyes so her parents will never fight and only good things will happen to her. After she's raped by her father, Charlie, Piccola goes to a local fortune teller to get blue eyes. By the end of the novel, she's lost her mind and hallucinates, believing she actually has obtained blue eyes. Charlie Breedlove is defined by two early incidents, his abandonment by his mother and the trauma of his first sexual experience when he's forced to have sex while two white men watch him, humiliating and emasculating him. Although he's a deeply troubled character who rapes and impregnates his own daughter, Morrison attempts to create a nuanced portrait of Charlie and does not simply paint him as a monster. Pauline Breedlove is always set apart from others, in part because of her injury. She is happy to marry Charlie and fights for a time to keep his interest. She becomes convinced it's impossible, just as she resigns herself to the idea that she could never be beautiful. Instead, she embraces religion and creating perfection for her white employers. She makes no space for perfection or love in her own home. Her own children call her Mrs. Breedlove, although her employers call her Polly. Frida McTeer and Claudia are together throughout much of the book, though Frida is older and somewhat more knowledgeable. She and Piccola bond over a shared love of 30s film icon Shirley Temple. Light eyes, flowers, and movie stars are the central symbols in the bluest eye. In a book titled The Bluest Eye, eyes are an obvious symbol. Piccola, like many characters, sees light eyes, like blue or green ones, as a sign of beauty. But for most African American people, light eyes are a physical impossibility. Morrison uses this admiration for light eyes as a symbol of how African Americans learn to hate their own identities. Piccola believes people will be nicer to her and good things will happen if she has blue eyes. By suggesting that those with light eyes may, in many cases, be worse off, Morrison encourages all readers, but particularly African Americans, to appreciate who they are. 
Flowers represent a rooted and happy community, a place where things and people can safely grow. Nothing grows well in Claudia and Piccola's community, not even marigolds that usually grow easily. Claudia eventually connects these seeds to Piccola's baby, but in Morrison's mind, flowers have a greater significance. Morrison writes about how many African Americans could not own a home and were constantly threatened by the fear of being outdoors. Owned homes are described as hot house sunflowers among the rows of weeds that were the rented houses. Renters may be reluctant to plant seeds in the ground when the landlord could evict them at any moment. At the end of the book, Morrison returns to the imagery of seeds and flowers. Referring to Claudia's community, she says, the soil is bad for certain kinds of flowers. Morrison wants the reader to see the lack of growth as a symptom of racial oppression. Neither people nor plants can grow healthily in such an environment. Movie stars were a major influence on popular culture in 1941. Characters refer to movie stars admiringly in the novel. For the female characters in The Bluest Eye, movie stars represent the unattainable goals society has given them. African American girls cannot achieve the appearance of movie stars of the era who were almost exclusively white and definitely not black. Self-loathing, the dangers of love, and the construction of beauty are the main themes in The Bluest Eye. In the foreword, Toni Morrison states that one key theme of the novel is self-loathing and what it will do to a person, particularly a child. Morrison believed cultural pressures in the United States inspired self-loathing in many African Americans. This self-loathing stems from what African American sociologist and writer W.E.B. Du Bois referred to as double consciousness, which described how the American world offers a black person no true self-consciousness, but only lets him see himself through the revelation of the other world. Du Bois says African Americans are always looking at oneself through the eyes of others and are taught by the dominant culture loaded with internalized racism to hate their own identities. In The Bluest Eye, the dangers of love are ever present. Throughout the book, the lines between love and sex and love and abuse are constantly crossed. Piccola hears about love from the prostitutes who live above her, yet these women do not love their clients. Soped Church insists he loved little girls when really he was molesting them. Charlie never really learned how to love. Morrison does not mince words. Love is messy, funky, and dangerous. Construction of beauty is another crucial theme. Morrison argues every individual may have a certain beauty, but what really affects our lives is the perception of beauty we learn from others. Claudia learns the dominant societal attitude, white is better than black, from her African-American family. Claudia struggles against these attitudes, but Piccola doesn't fight them at all. Morrison explains Piccola's family is ugly because they believe they are ugly. Movingly, Piccola wonders if having pretty blue eyes could lead her family to behave in a prettier way. Morrison says Piccola would never know her beauty because she's so convinced of the necessity of blue eyes, a comment on how society connects beauty to a white person's features. This message is destructive. 